Hey everybody, we're back, uh, day two, working on this pouch, um, the, uh, last video, the last step was after I, it had come out of the oven for that last time I decided I was going to let it finish off drying natural. Um, one step that I left out and forgot to show you guys in the video was at that point in time I still worked on it just a little bit more um, to work on these fold lines that come in through here. It's hard to see the shadow cast weird on leather, but um, what I used was my stitch guide tool and I used the end round pieces like a burnishing uh, tool. And I went around to the inside and just kind of slowly worked on getting all my curves and all the um, rounded areas right in through here like that, just kind of working to help make everything nice and round. So as you can see, we got a really nice shell here, you know, for not stapling it down. This thing turned out pretty slick. Um, you know, it may be a harder way to do it. You know, a lot of you might be like me. You're not rich. You don't have all this space and stuff to use certain kinds of equipment and make things easier. So, you know, you can't accomplish a real pretty, you know, mold just takes a lot of time and patience. So if you're like me and you got some of that, you're going to find that this isn't as bad as it looks. But you know, like I said, worked on all the edges, got everything hooked up, and you can always turn the work over and look at it. Right here may have been just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of a low spot, but you really can't see it anyway. And where the strap buckle goes through over here, it's not going to be as noticeable. I mean, I'm, I think I'm probably just OCD, but I don't know. I may still try to push just a little bit to see if I could get that. Let me see if I can get that spot out of there still tiny bit damp oh okay well we got it <laughs> so i might go around this thing a little bit more now that i know that it is still take out i got that good uh we'll be back here in a second you guys okay so we're back and i actually got that low spot out of there that turned out pretty awesome i can't believe that still um that little piece here kind of worked work it you know we're worked worked that low spot back out sorry you guys it got tongue tied up um so the next step what i'm going to do is i'm time to get rid of some of this excess and start um designing the the shape of the back panel um you know this is nothing that i have a template for to make everyone is unique individual because of the way that i do this um so what i'm going to do is i'm probably going to take a piece of the leftover scrap leather and maybe cut myself a little trim off um, to where I got an angled piece there and what I can do is use it as a guide I can hold my marker up next to the leather like this and go all the way around like this and give myself a nice guideline that I could roll this nice contour just take in mind when you get to the belly of these dishes um, it's a steeper angle here on the bottom so you got to be really careful to to not go too short against the belly of your pouch when you're coming around so I always stop about three quarters of the way over you know a quarter of the way over or so and then do the other side and hold it up make sure everything's going good and then I start putting myself some guidelines that way I know I'm gonna have enough room down here for my stitch holes and the hole for um, the cord to go through to where I can get it mounted up and secured so um, we'll be back after I get this marked and cut and we'll kind of show you the roughed in edges and kind of go back to this pin mark over here that's got me kind of muffed up I have to see how I can feather that out we'll be back. all right we're back now um, as you can see I've trimmed the edges up um, and all that stuff and got the corners trued up up here to where they come off more straight you know there might be a little bit of tucked coming in to where it rounds up there before the fold over but the fold over is going to be from edge to edge so like I said when it comes over there's going to be the trim that covers up this to where if it rains on um, it's not going to fall down into the pouch um, you know it's not perfectly round or anything like that you know this is all been formed by hand I'm gonna get it as perfect as I can get it but uh 
yeah now i got enough room to get a uh, run of stitches down through here and a couple anchor end points like on the other pouch um like the little covered pieces on this one I, this one was double stitched but to be totally honest with you when i put the first run of stitches in i was like god that's more or less decoration now because of how strong it already was but um i may have enough room for a double set of stitches to where i might try to maybe do that on this one or just maybe up at the top just to offer more security for getting in and outed over time but we'll see i'm not for sure how i'm gonna do that yet so there's that part probably gonna take a piece of paper towel or something and buff everything up and get it a little more shiny and clean looking before i do my stain but um that's still a while away but here's this part we'll be back yeah all right yeah we're back and what i've done now um is i've cut a piece of leather that's for the most part going to fit the area that i need for um the back panel and the fold over so what i'm fixing to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to use some of my trusty old gorilla glue um to bond these two pieces of leather together um i cannot stress enough about this gorilla glue you guys um this is a water activated glue uh and oh my goodness i can't believe it it's even made in the usa <laughs> so that's a shock but what i'm going to do is i'm going to dampen this leather ridge around through here with the just a paper towel and i'm just going to give it a little touch around here with the paper towel just to barely wet this stuff because what happens is when this gorilla glue activates that water it wants to foam up and this stuff will grow like three or four five six seven times bigger than the amount applied to your project so what i'm going to do is just take a little scrap piece of leather um take a razor cut me a little angle in it so it's got a sharp scraping edge and i'm just going to put a very thin <clears throat> very thin layer of that grill glue only on one side of this um then i'm going to take a whole bunch of those little clamps that you always see me use in my videos and take some scrap pieces of leather and make some little protective pieces to go over my soon to be finished leather clamp everything down and let it get a good old dry time going so uh let me put all this stuff together and i'll get it clamped down and that's the next step all right y'all we're back and uh got the top part of the pan all gluing down <coughs> to the bottom and i get like you said see i got all the clamps around it making sure that it has a good bond and uh let me see if i can get down here with as little of the glue as i've used you can still see how it's foaming up down there this stuff is amazing you guys but you just got to be so frugal with it um if you were to just take that bad boy and drip it out like you would some of the rubber cements or squeeze a run on there and just kind of smear it around you'd have yourself one heck of a uh, foam tire inner tube going around your project so there's that i hope you guys are enjoying it this is probably the end i'm gonna have to go to work here in a few so as i say in all my videos love you guys and do something fun today